Praise God. Have you ever heard of a screaming demon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I saw it on the car one time. It was all jacked up with planes on the side. Okay, but what I heard the Lord say is when we said, you can have the religion. Yeah. Oh, I, I just sensed a demon yeah. was screaming. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, no, you can have everything with that because yeah. the demon of religion loves to manifest yeah. in Christians' lives yeah. because it's the angel of light appearing to have a form of godliness yeah. but no power. Yeah. And so when we said, you can have that old religion, oh, it's, I heard the demon scream. It was yeah. like a screaming demon. Yeah. It's like, well, you got to go. You don't have authority Amen. here. As soon as we declare that you have to leave, you have to go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, welcome. Amen to True Grace Church, hallelujah. We are gathered again together to declare the name of Jesus. Amen. It's all about him. Amen. It's all about him. Right. It's all about Jesus. It's all about his love for us. It's about the power of God. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about God the Father's plan. It's about God's will, God's way, God's love, and that we get to be part of it. Amen. We get to be a very vital part of what God's doing on the earth. In fact, he would not be able to fulfill his plan without man. Amen. Right? Yeah, right? Because he made us part of the plan. Yeah, right. So he's doing it with us. Isn't that amazing? Yes, yes. I'm just so grateful. I'm just so thankful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's get this up here. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, the anointing is here tonight Amen. to locate the need that you have in your life, whether it be in your body, whether it be in your soul, your mind, your emotions, whether it be in your spirit. The anointing is here. And as you hear tonight, the words that go out will accomplish what God sends them to do. Mm. They are literally words of power. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are words that are empowered by the Holy Spirit and the anointing of his authority to release a word and the power for it to move in your life as God sees fit. Amen? Amen. And I tell you this. God is a good God. Amen. He's a good daddy. Amen. And he has good plans for you Amen. even this very night. Amen. This very night could change your life forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. I remember when I went down to 5 at church <laughs> in May of 2021 after I had watched online and as I saw the miracles of God. My heart exploded with it. Yeah. I said, God, this is real? This is really happening? And it was at the height of the COVID pandemic, right? Yeah. And everybody was feeling so masked and, and shoved in their homes. You couldn't meet with your family. And you're like, what is going on? But God says, this is what's going on. <laughs> this is what's happening. This is what's going to put an end to all of that junk that the enemy's trying Amen. to do on the planet, Amen. in the church and around the world. Amen. And the day that I went up for the impartation, my life changed forever. Hallelujah. Forever. Like, I will never be the same. The word that was released to me unlocked and activated the calling of God that had been in my life from the time I was in the womb, but had just never been positioned correctly. Mm, yeah. You know, a wrong key won't open the door. Right. Mm -hmm. You gotta have the right key to open the door. Yeah. The yeah. anointing of God had to come at the prescribed time. Mm. Jesus had to yeah. come at the prescribed time. Jesus was the door, is the door. And that power that was given to us through the Holy Spirit is what opens the door. But I had never been in a meeting where that type of anointing oh, had been released. Yeah. I've been in meetings where there's, you know, there's various yeah. types of anointings, yeah. right? Yeah. There's various yeah. 
levels of power, anointings for different giftings, but it's the same Holy Spirit. Amen. But I had never been in the presence oh. of that type of anointing yeah. that was then able to be imparted. Yeah. I'd been in meetings where people had done miracles, yeah. walked in healing, but they never offered to impart it to anybody. Yeah. They, they would minister healing to you, but they didn't say, does anybody else want this? Yeah. In fact, yeah. many of the old time uh, wow. prophets, apostles, yeah. not that many apostles I know of, um, but but leaders in the church where giant movements were, were happening, people were being raised from the dead, there was mighty healings, mighty yeah. miracles. They didn't pass this on to somebody else. And, and that was that was not God's will. Amen. When the Lord spoke to the apostles, he says, go into all the world and release this gospel to every person you meet. Yeah. And then impart to them what I imparted to you. It wasn't to be confined to just a few. Mm -hmm. if, if that was the case, then God really doesn't know how to multiply a kingdom. But you see, we didn't keep going. And that's why here we are 2,000 years later. And this anointing is now just bursting on the scene. Yeah. But it's bursting on the scene. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I can't look back. Woo! So we're going up. We're going forward. And so tonight... Tonight, the anointing is here yeah. to unlock your calling, your gifting, the anointing in your life, the fire of God in your life. So you're not just like, well, I gotta go to church. I wish I could feel that joy that she feels. The anointing is here to baptize you in the Holy Spirit with power and fire. Yeah. When you get baptized in fire, you're never the same. You are never ever the same when you get baptized in fire. Okay? It's if I could compare it to anything in the natural, it's like reading about somebody being in love or being in love. Like when you can read about somebody being in love, well that's a cool story. But then when you meet the person that you're in love with, you're like, gee, whoa, Lord, here comes the power. Right? And it's with all your heart. It's with all your heart. So the Lord says, This is your night. Lay a hold of it. Amen? Amen. 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 So tonight, again, we're talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God operates with borders and boundaries. Boundaries and borders, portals and protection. That's how the kingdom of God operates. It's not chaos. It's not free-for-all. It's not a mosh pit. It's not a rave. It's not do what you want to do, free love. God's kingdom operates in authority and power, in order, precision, yeah. purpose. Yeah. Have you ever been on a walk and you see flowers? And you look at the big flower, it gets your attention. But have you ever gotten down and looked at the little tiny ones? You're like, oh, that one's just as beautiful. It's just small. Yeah. That little flower was perfectly designed by God. Amen. It's not chaotic. It, God knew this one has to have five petals and a little yellow thing in the middle. And, and it's beautiful. Uh -huh. And that's how you are made. Uh -huh. You are made. Your body's not just floating around out there. Your body's one piece, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I want you to see that when you have boundaries in your life and borders and portals, portals or gates or openings, then you have protection. This is how God designed his children and his kingdom to operate. And his kingdom will have no end. So this is also going to be in heaven. Heaven has this very thing. So we might as well become heavenly minded while we're on earth, right? Because we bring heaven to earth. Thy like kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take you to this beautiful scripture. I love this scripture. In Psalm 147, 12 through 14. He writes, Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Zion, worship your God. Mm -hmm. And that's for us too. Mm -hmm. For he has strengthened the authority of your gates. Mm -hmm. Come on. Those are the opening the portals. He strengthened yeah. your portals. He even blesses you with more children. More spiritual children are coming into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Come on. He's the one who brings peace to your borders, feeding you the most excellent of fair. 
<laughs> so the Lord wants to bring peace within your borders and within the border of his kingdom of which we are now a part of as his children. <clears throat> so if you have peace within the borders, that means God's feeding you, God's taking care of you, God is making sure all is well and that you're faring well within the borders and the boundaries that he has set for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm going to take you now and show you three different areas he spoke to me about, about boundaries and borders. First of all, God sets boundaries and borders and provides portals and protection for his people. Okay? It's geographical. He does lands, regions, nations, and cities. There's borders and boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. In the personal realm, there's a physical body that needs to be have boundaries and borders, protection. There's relationships. And then there's the private versus the public part of your body. And then there's the spiritual part of you. You're a spirit. You have a soul, your mind. And then you have a spiritual authority. So those who are under more authority to God, surrender more to God, understand borders more. But the train is never so free as when it's on the tracks. Come on. There you go. You know those big double-decker trains that we see going along the road, on the trail, on the rails as we're driving on the freeway? If those things derail, they don't move. If you get off and outside of the boundaries and the borders that God has set for you, you're, you're going to be stymied. You're going to be stuck. And then you could literally become prey for the enemy. Okay? So now I'm going to get into this a little bit more. First of all, we're going to look at geographical boundaries in the Bible. Okay, this is not going to be a history lesson, but it's going to be an enlightenment for you. Because every boundary is spiritual. And the devil knows his boundaries. Demons know their boundaries. They do. They know the spiritual realm more than we do. And that shouldn't be the case. Because we have everything open to us. All things that pertain to life and godliness have been given to us through Jesus Christ. So allow yourself now to listen by the Spirit, okay? All right, so first of all, geographical borders and boundaries. In creation of the earth, we know God was putting things into order and setting boundaries and borders, okay? Now, I'm, there's something going to show you tonight that you've never seen before because I've never seen it. Maybe some of you did see it before, but I've never seen it, and I was excited. Genesis 1, 1 and 2, the New King James, it says, In the beginning, very first scripture in the Bible right here, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, some of you are trying to picture that in your mind. You're like, what does that look like? What, when was this? What did it look like? What was going on? Well, things were not translated properly in the Hebrew into our English language. Yeah. So let me go back to the Hebrew for you and tell you what these words. Form, without form, is, is a Hebrew word. Void is a Hebrew word, and darkness is a Hebrew word in that scripture. So without form means the earth was confused. There was nothingness, but then it was also a place of chaos. How can you have chaos and nothingness? Because there was something here before. And it had gone awry. It was called the fall of the enemy. Things had gone into chaos. When the devil fell, all that was on this earth where he could go and come and go, come and go, come and go. And then when he fell, wherever there's evil, there's chaos. There's confusion in every evil work. There's envy, there's jealousy, there's strife. It's chaotic. Just try walking through a prison. Open up all the doors in the prison and tell me how beautiful it's going to be. It's going to be a place of heaven on earth. No, it's not. Oh, no. Oh, no. The guards will lock themselves in there. You know, in their little cubby hole, if that happens. Right. Okay? So, look at, without form means there was confusion. Well, God's not going to let that stand because he's got a plan. Mm. And then void means undistinguishable ruin. Mm. Did 
Did you ever know? I mean, if you don't look at these words, you're like, I just, it was without form and void. Without void, void. I don't know. Void means empty. I don't know. I don't know. You're just guessing, right? It means undistinguishable ruin. Have you ever seen a city just decimated by, by a fire or, or a war? It's, it's horrible. Undistinguishable ruin. You couldn't even tell that there was anything good on this earth at this point in Genesis 1. And then it says that darkness was on the face of the deep. The darkness there in the Hebrew means misery, destruction. What? Not just like it was dark and lightning to be turned on. There was death. How could there be death if there was nothing? Yes. Good questions. Ignorance. Sorrow. And wickedness. So, this was a bad place. This was a bad place to be. No human being was here yet. But God had a plan. And God's bigger than anything the devil could do. Hallelujah. So you might say, well, that kind of looks like my life. No. Chaotic. <clears throat> undistinguishable ruin. No. Destruction is everywhere. You know, you could come into church like that and you could say, that's my life. That's the state of my mental thoughts. That's the state of my emotions. It's like, how is this ever going to be pulled together? Lord, it looks like somebody came and, 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 and hit all the bowling pins down and they, they just blew out. I, there's no way I can get those things put up again. The Lord goes, I can do anything. Amen. What's impossible with you is possible with God. Ooh, yes. So God says, I've got a plan for this planet. Yes. He's talking about this planet. There was junk on this planet. There was evil things on this planet. But let's see what happened. I like this. But the spirit of God was hovering. Yeah. Hovering. Uh -huh. Have you ever seen an osprey? The bird that just hovers in the sky. You're like, it's not moving. It just holds its position. It's quivering. We're like a hummingbird, right? Hummingbirds would do that too. Their wings are going so fast. that they just, They're just one place. But the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And what was he hovering? Because he was waiting for the word to be released so he could go to work. Come on. Because this is how the plan works with the Trinity. The Father thinks of the plan. He has the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus utters it. He's called the Word of God. Jesus speaks. Mm -hmm. It says, by his word, the worlds were formed. That's in Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah. Then the Spirit is the one that yeah. brings it to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is that exciting? Yeah. Some of you are going, like, well, that makes perfect sense now that you say it that way. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to Bible college to try to figure that out, right? <laughs> Did you pass the test? You just heard it. Okay. So by the end of six days, God had put things into order on this planet. We're talking about boundaries and borders, right? Portals and protection. What did he do? He, he created light and dark, sun, moon, stars, and sky. Days and nights, time, space, matter, land and sea, plants, fish, animals, and Adam. He did a really good job. In fact, every after every single day, he said, "That's good. That's good." Right. And God, and that was day one. And God says, "And it is good. And it is very good." On day two, he created day two. And day three, he created. And day four, and day five. And then after he made man, he said, "It is very good." Yeah. Woo! Come on, did you feel that? Yeah. Good. When he looks at you, he says you're very good. Hallelujah. That's why the devil spends his whole stinking life trying to tell you you're bad. <laughs> Pastors and preachers try to tell you you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. Run out of that church as fast yeah, as you yeah, can. Yeah. God says, I created Adam is very good. And God never said, bad, bad Adam. No, he says, I'm going to redeem Adam even after he fell. Who went looking for who? Adam didn't go looking for God. God went looking for Adam. And he's looking for you to tell you, you're very good. I'm going to restore you to the original. And even better. Hallelujah. In Genesis 1.31, it says, Then God saw everything that he had made. This is the last verse in that chapter. God saw everything he had made out of that chaos and undistinguishable ruin. And indeed it was, say with me, very good. Hallelujah. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And we know the seventh day was the rest. Yes. He and Adam took a rest. Adam was created and the first day he lived was the day of rest and Sabbath. Because Jesus is the rest. He yes. is the Sabbath. And in Psalm 115 verse 16 it says, The heavens 
They belong to our God. Ooh, yes. For they are his alone. But, but wait, 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 wait. Who was the earth given to? Mm -hmm. But he has given us the earth. Yeah. And put us in charge. Yes. I think we have a responsibility now right. to do what he told us to do. Amen. We need now to listen to him. Lord, how do I, how do I set up for boundaries and borders? and How do I operate on this planet? The Lord says, oh, I, I'm glad you asked that. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you to be just like me. Amen. Just Amen. like me. And God gave people groups. Remember, we're talking about boundaries and borders. Okay, so I'm using this as a, as a distinguishable metaphor for you to understand. The mountains are in place, and they're going to stay there until God tells them to move. Woo! Hallelujah. The sea can only go so far. Yeah. The sky is not going to fall. The sun's not going to follow the sky because God put it there and it can't come out until he says it to come down. Amen. The sun is going to stay. The stars are going to stay unless God says them to come down. God gave the earth to mankind. This is your planet. Amen. This is your, this is not the devil's planet. It wasn't created, recreated in Genesis 1. For the devil was created for us. So look, it says here. God gave people groups, different nations to dwell in, and each nation has an angel assigned to it. No, no. I hang on, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Hold up. So after Adam and Eve multiplied, 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 then the Lord says different people groups are going to populate different continents. How many continents are there? Seven. Seven. And then they're going to live in different regions and different areas. Now look at the scripture. This is the New Living Translation. Deuteronomy 32.8. When the Most High assigned lands to the nations, nations are people groups, where when he divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the peoples according to the number in his heavenly court. You're going, what? We're talking about men, we're talking about angels, heavenly court. Let's now look at the Good News Translation, Deuteronomy 32, 8 and 9. GNT means Good News Translation. The most, same scripture, the most high assigned nations their lands. He determined where peoples should live. He assigned to each nation a heavenly being. But Jacob's descendants, he chose for himself. United States of America. There's an angel over of every nation in Africa. There's an angel over South America. There's an angel over Europe. There's an angel over Asia. There's an angel over nations and continents. You said there's seven spirits of God. Did you know that? It says that in the scripture. I'm not making it up. So the seven spirits of God, each one covers and watches over a continent. But then in that continent, there's many different nations. We have 50 states just in the United States. There's an angel assigned to the state of California, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, yeah. Washington, and each one has an individual angel assigned to them to watch over them. Amen. Is that exciting? Yeah. Yeah, come on, God already put them into place for us. He put them into place to help us. Hallelujah. So, Archangel Michael was given Israel. Yeah. Because it came from Abraham's line. But we've got mighty ones over the United States. Understand? Rank, order, protection, boundaries, borders. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Amen. <laughs> Personal boundaries. Now, you are having going to experience personal boundaries in your own life. So we're now talking about people. Okay. If I talk to you about lands, you have to understand. Let's go back right now. Let's go back to the lands a minute. Go. I'm going to go back one more slide. Let's, Holy Spirit, tell me go back one more. As we know. In our country right now, we're having a crisis at the border. Are we not? Yes. Have we ever seen this happen before? Yes. 
Never ever in the history of the United States have we had these, this crisis at the border. When you think about it in the natural realm, you think this is not the right way it was designed for people to come in legally. People were to come in and they were to pass certain laws, take certain tests, and become eventually a citizen of the United States, right? If you come in illegally, you're technically called an illegal alien, not an immigrant. That's right. You have to understand these terms, however politically correct you want to say. It's an illegal alien. It's somebody that crossed the border without permission. Yeah. Yeah. So as God sets up boundaries and borders in this world, if the border is torn down, then anything can come in and anyone can come in. And they do all of you have a lock on your front door? Hallelujah. Yeah. Why? Because it's a boundary and it's a border and it's a barrier yeah. to keep the people inside safe from those who would be on the outside to cause harm. This is how God designed it. Jesus says, I am the door to the sheep. If you come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Yeah. That's in the John chapter 10. So I'm not, I didn't have that scripture up here. So there is only one way to the Father, and it's through Jesus. But there's many false openings, and there's many false ways to get there. And if you believe the false way, you won't get there. You'll get down. There's only one road that goes up and many roads that go down. Many roads that lead you to false religions, false gods, and eventually to harm. Yeah. So God says there must be boundaries and borders. Even heaven has borders. When Israel crossed out of Egypt and into the promised land, the Lord said, these are the borders you're to live in. And the 12 tribes, this is your allotment. And this is your allotment. And this is your allotment. He told Joshua, I want you, every place the sole of your foot shall tread is yours. Abraham, walk the boundaries of the land that I gave you. But don't go past the border. Because wow, there's no protection across the border. Oh, man. If you lived in a walled city, you were safe. Yeah. Until it was Jericho. And God yeah. says, we're taking this one first. Because right. that was the seed of Satan. Yeah. Right? And so... If you have a, a walled city and God built the wall, you can sleep at night. But the scripture says, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Right. Right. And unless the Lord builds the house, it's going to fall. It will, it will stand if God's built it. So now I'm talking about don't step out of your border and don't step out of your boundary. When you are ministering in the spiritual realm, you can't just go willy-nilly anywhere you want. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I've had skeptics and critics mm -hmm. be very smart aleck and say to me, well, if you really can heal, why don't you just go to Rose Community Hospital and empty out all the rooms? I said, because that's not my area God's assigned me to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. God says, anyone who walks into this building, you're in the anointing. Hallelujah. You can get healed, delivered, and set free right here. Amen. But he hasn't called me there yet. If he called me there, I would surely go. There you go. It says everyone who came to Jesus got healed. Yeah. Everyone who was brought to Jesus got demons cast out of them. Amen. Every place where Peter's shadow touched, that means a person had to want to be under that glory cloud, they got healed. Everyone you lay hands on that comes to you, yeah, that comes to you, they will be healed. Come on, and then they must come with faith, or at least somebody's got to have faith. Yeah. You're gonna yeah. put a hole in the roof and drop your yeah. paralyzed friend down here. Yeah. At least somebody had to have faith yeah. to do that for him. Yeah, that's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Those are the kind of friends you want. Yeah. Those are the kind of friends you be surround yourself with people like that. Yeah. 
that would cut a hole in a rope to get you to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, oh, you yeah. didn't go to church tonight. You should just stay home. You're not feeling good. Go to church. Amen. Yeah. Go to church. Yeah. Go where your healing is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you were here the night that I actually threw up right as I was preaching? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I, my stomach was so upset for some weird reason. I just come back from a flight, I think, huh? Yeah. Uh, and I was up here, and all of a sudden, my stomach was like, whoa. And I was like, I never feel like this. What is going on? Like, I never, hardly ever throw up. Like, what is going on? I just kept playing. I just kept worshiping. And it was like, hmm? Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna war, war in my worship. And then I got up to preach. And as I stood up here, I began to talk. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, here it comes. And, Gigi covered the camera and somebody took a baby and buggy. Like, what is going Oh, I'm not leaving this building. I am not leaving this building. Like, you are not getting me to go home, devil. That's right, man. Just go That's home, right. Pastor. Just go lay down. You probably got a flu bug. No. No, I don't. I don't got anything but Jesus. Yeah. So I went around the wall. Amen. Pastor Larry was in there. I says, Pastor Larry, you're going to have to just come out here for, with, for me. He goes, whoa, okay, I'm up the back. I could get nothing planned, but he just came out all right. <laughs> I sat back in there and took some drinks of water. I just began speaking over myself in tongues, yes. speaking over myself, speaking over myself. Mario came back to check on me. He goes, Pastor, are you okay? I said, you know what? I think I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I said, good to go. Yeah. I came right around that wall. I just grabbed the microphone from my husband. I said, thank you very much. You gave me five minutes. I'm healed, and we finished the message, and people got delivered that same day. Yes. 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 So if this is the boundary and the border the Lord has yeah. given to me, and given me authority, given me power here, then you better believe I'm not giving the devil an inch of this building. Not an inch, not one square inch even of the air, the atmosphere, or anything above, beneath, on the left and the right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because we have an angel assigned to True Grace Church. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. You have an angel assigned to you and to your house and to your family. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to remind the devil of all the protection we have. Amen. We've got backup. We got backup. So now personal boundaries. Now I want to talk to you about your personal boundaries in your life. You know, it's very important you as a believer understand and grow in your understanding of your personal boundaries. If you don't know your personal boundaries, you will be outside of a safety zone. And that's where you can get hurt. That's where you can get hurt. So 1 Corinthians 6. Is, oh, God's designed to protect and preserve us. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, Passion Translation says... Have you forgotten that your body is now the sacred temple of the spirit of holiness? Wow, God dwells in your body now, not in a temple that, that people go to made out of stones. He dwells in your body, and he lives in you. You don't belong to yourself any longer. For the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, lives in your sanctuary. You were God's expensive purchase, paid for with the tears of blood. So by all means, then... Use your body to bring glory to God. God loves your body, and so should you. Your body's not dirty. Your body's not bad. Your body's not ugly. Your body is beautiful. You should tell your children from the moment they're born, your body is beautiful. Don't say, that's nasty, that's dirty, that's ugly. Say, your body is beautiful. It is literally the temple of the Holy Spirit. Tell them. Tell them when they're babies. Begin to say, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, baby. He dwells in you. You're holy. You belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. You're God's sanctuary. What does that mean? Begin to tell them. Begin to give them revelation of what that means. And then you have to believe it about yourself. Look at this scripture in Psalm 139. He writes, you formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside. You wove them all together in my mother's womb. Now, God places an eternal, this is not in the scripture, this is the italics, God places an eternal spirit inside the conceived child at the moment of conception. Mm -hmm. wow. Not when there's just a heartbeat. Yeah, right. At the moment of conception. Yeah, that's right. In the womb of the mother and covers that life. Mm -hmm. Sends the child a guardian angel and watches over him or her their whole life. 
Verse 15, you even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Amen. So, God created you in his image and in his likeness. God loves you. He loves your body. The enemy wants to tarnish and hurt your body because he doesn't like that you're made in God's image and he's not. Yeah. So he starts as a young child to bring molestation, yeah. abuse, yeah. sexual harm to your body, to violate you, yeah. to harm you, to maim you, yeah. to cause you to be warped about your body. Any child, any child who has been molested has an issue with their body. They have a sexual view of their body and it causes them to go down various different roads of pain and confusion. Yeah. But God is the healer. Amen. Remember what he did when the earth was chaotic and, and ruined. Indescribable ruin. If that is you, God says, I can make you new again. I can make you new again. This is his desire is to renew you. You can be restored. You can be healed from that violation. But now as a believer in Christ, as you walk in the kingdom, you need to understand your boundaries and your borders. You need to understand my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not my body or my choice. Truly, the baby's not your body. The baby is God's body and you're God's body. Nice. Right? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. So honor God yes. with your body body. Yes. Bring your body to the Lord and say, Lord, show me how beautiful my body is to you. Show me how beautiful my body is to you and what it was created for, to house your spirit. Amen. And then show me how to put boundaries and borders and close open doors to the enemy, but open doors to you. Good word. See, if the Holy Spirit is flowing into you, but you've got something coming in over here, there's going to be a pollutant in there. The Lord is a river, and it's always flowing. He wants to flow in you and give you revelation constantly of how beautiful your body is. The world will never tell you your body's beautiful without an airbrush, without digitally altering your image, and this needs to be longer, and this needs to be short, whatever. <laughs> the world makes so much money on altering how you look. Yes. I'm just talking cosmetic stuff. I'm not talking about, you know, if you got a broken arm, you put it in a sling or a cast. I'm talking about altering your natural beauty. And telling you, you need to look like this, you need to have this, you need to have that, you need to go, you're not working out enough, you need to have more abs, you need to You need to have muscles on your back, you, you, want, you want just a flat back or you want all those muscles on your back, you need to have three sides of your deltoid showing, I'm going to show you how to build those muscles, do you think that matters? No. If you're going to be in a muscle competition, I guess it matters. <laughs> you need to lift up your arm, that's what you need your muscle for, lift up your arm and use it. So. We're making money. Yeah. I'm telling people, your lips are too small. Let me yeah. inject them with this stuff that's going to now make them this big. But here's the catch. <laughs> it wears off right. after like eight months. And then you have literally stretch marks on your lips. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I didn't even have to do that. Why did I do that? You look at your old picture and you're like, my lips weren't that bad. <laughs> my lips were fine. What did I do now? You got to go, you see? You, you got to go have another one. 
And then they say, your cheekbones aren't high enough. You know, you're getting older. And, and you're very beautiful, but it's all a gimmick. Yeah. You, you need to have some pumper in your cheekbones. We, we just inject some more stuff in your cheekbones. And now your cheekbones are up, and now your lips are out here. But you know, your, your eyebrow, looks like the hair on your eyebrow is getting a little thin. Can we just tattoo the, on your eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and everything's wrong. You need to get false eyelashes. You know your eyelashes. You don't have any eyelashes. You can put false ones on. That'll take off all the ones that you have. <laughs> and cause you to have eye problems and irritation problems. But we've got a great optometrist you can go to, an ophthalmologist, who will fix all the damage that the eyelashes are going to do to your eyes. <laughs> you see, why? Because the enemy doesn't like the way God made you. You are made beautiful. Your body's beautiful. And as you age, age gracefully. So what if I have lines on my forehead? I can move my eyebrows. You can actually see my face. It's not stone. Besides, my mom told me, don't, don't buy botulism. Don't buy cans that are dented. It's botulism. Don't shoot it in your, in your forehead. Some of you don't turn it off right now, right? Okay. You don't need that. It causes autoimmune diseases. Your body is beautiful. Amen. Big, large, small. Your body is beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. I thought this would be like, that doesn't sound too spiritual. It is. Because it's breaking the lies off of you. Amen. That the world put on you. Amen. Don't believe the lies. You are as God made you to be. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. See, I even have friends that own businesses like that. And they may not be so happy that I'm saying this now, but it's the truth. Yep. It is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's spiritual boundaries and borders, okay? Remember, we're talking about boundaries and borders and portals. Uh -huh. So we talked about geographical or boundaries on the planet. We talked about physical boundaries with your own body, uh -huh. where you go, what you do what you partake of, what you let go in your mouth, what you let go in your ears, what you let go in your eyes. Right? Those are openings. Those are called portals. You better strengthen those gates. That old stuff can't come back in. <laughs> Let me tell you, if that, if that old flame comes knocking at your front door, the one that abused you, you better say, no, the door's locked. You Go away. I'm not even answering it. So we need to have boundaries in our life. You can't just be close friends with everybody. You can't. Yeah, but I'd like to have a lot of friends, but you can't have a lot of friends yeah. that are close to you. That's because right. people can only be close to you who are fully surrendered to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The more surrendered they are, the closer they can get. But they have to be healed. They have to be delivered. Because yeah. they'll be close to you for a minute, and then next thing you know, they're gone. And you're like, oh my gosh, I poured my heart out to that person. They know all my deep things in my heart, and now they're gone. And they just lost my phone number and unfriended me. Yeah. What happened? How many breakups can you go through? So you need to walk in wisdom and go, Lord, how, how close do I get to this person? He goes, well, I'm going to give you wisdom. Amen. Wisdom Amen. has built the house, right? That's right. So now, spiritual boundaries and borders, portals of protection. I'm talking now about your spirit man. Your spirit man is really who you are. Yeah. Hebrews, or excuse me, Proverbs 25, 28, Amplified Bible says, He who has no rule over his own spirit, it's like a city that's broken down without walls. Anybody can come and go. Proverbs 25, 28, the other amplified version. Like a city that is broken down and without walls, leaving it unprotected, is a man who has no self-control over his spirit and sets himself up for trouble. And then Proverbs 25, 28, in the Douay Reims, 1899 American edition says, as a city that lieth open. And is not compassed with walls. So is a man that cannot refrain his own spirit in speaking. God is giving you power and authority over your own life. It's one of the fruit of the spirit called self-control. You must be able first to make the boundaries within yourself. What you say where you go, what you allow yourself to think. Do you allow yourself to go on a, on a jag for one, two, three hours at a time? 
thinking of negative thoughts about an offense that you have, just rehashing over and over and over and over. You must take it to Jesus and say, I put that, put this before you right now. I'm not going to think about that again. I have the mind of Christ. Amen. I'm only thinking the thoughts Ooh. of Jesus yeah. right now. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Do you allow yourself to shoot out the lip and just give your opinion, just blurt it out anytime you want? That's not ruling over your own spirit. Sometimes the Lord wants you to speak and you don't. That's not ruling over your own spirit. Well, I didn't know well, what they would do. The Lord says, well, if you're ever going to prophesy, you're going to have to get used to saying when I say speak and being quiet when I say be quiet. Amen. This is the way you're going to rule over your own spirit by allowing the Holy Spirit to be the ruler over your soul and over your spirit. But I loved all those different versions of that particular um, scripture because it lets me know that a city without walls mm -hmm. is an unprotected city and enemies will come in. Mm -hmm. The devil roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants your walls down. You know, my neighbor told me a couple months ago, she said, Heather, I just needed to tell you, there was a guy that was walking through the neighborhood um, with a backpack on and was trying to open people's front doors. Whoa. And I watched him go to the house across the street from you, and then he went to your house and he tried to open your door. I said, this happened two months ago, and you're just telling me now? Oh, See, I'll immediately go, why would you? Yeah. You know, but yeah, okay. so somebody just walking through our neighborhood? Trying to open the door? Yeah. Well, sometimes I don't lock the door. Sometimes I'm in, going through the front to the backyard. I don't, every time I walk in, I go in and out of my front yard a lot because I go out and trim the trees because I got a chainsaw oh, for Christmas. I love it. <laughs> and so I'm in and out of the front door, right? Sometimes the door's open. And there's this, there's, there's some creepy guy trying to open the front door. But God's got an angel. I mean, yeah, you got to go through the angels to get to my house and you're not going to, you're yeah. not going to, they're not going to let you in. That's all there is to it. But see, the enemy is like that. Yeah. If you just let your thoughts wander for a day, guess what? You you, you could be someplace you don't want to go. Amen. And you could stay a lot longer than you wanted to stay. And it'll cost you a lot more than you wanted to pay. So you, you must guard your heart, guard your thoughts. I'm going to get there in just a second. So that's why I, I love this. Okay. Outside the borders. What is outside the borders of God's protection in your life? Danger. danger. Whoa, danger. Yes, yeah. stranger danger, right? Stranger danger. Stranger danger. That's why he gave you angels to be on the border patrol. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Outside the borders. Revelation 22, 14, 15. New Living Translation. Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates. You go through the gate. That means you went through the proper way. You went through Jesus. You went through the gates of the city, and you get to eat the fruit from the tree of life. That's everybody who believes in Jesus gets to go to heaven. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. If you don't protect your own soul, your own heart, your own life, that's what's coming for you. It's nothing good. That's why sheep yeah. need to stay in the pen. They need to stay where it's safe. The shepherd brings them in, into the safety of the sheepfold. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 4.23. So I'm going to give you now instructions about what you're going to do. These are instructions, how to put up boundaries and borders, close portals, and then allow them to be open for your protection. 4.23, Proverbs. Above all, above all. Above all, this is the first thing you got to do. You must guard the affections of your heart. If you fell in love with the wrong person ever in your life, you know what that feels like. <gasps> yeah, well, that was bad. But what happened? The affections of your heart weren't guarded. And that smooth talking charm came in. You were like, oh, like a deer in headlights, right? For... The affections of your heart affect all that you are. Have you ever tried to tell somebody you should break up with that guy? He's not good for you. Break up with that girl. I'm telling you, she's cheating on you. She's not doing you right. Oh, no, she would never cheat on me. Oh, no, he's a good guy. He just had some rough things happen in life. No, no, no. You need to break up 
neither of you are ready for a relationship right now. Right. Any woman who gets in a relationship with a man who's still broken, she's not ready for a relationship, and neither is he. Amen. If a guy gets in a relationship with a woman who's still broken and hurting, neither one of them are ready. Because why would you be drawn to somebody who's broken and hurting mm. and manifesting all kinds of stuff in their life? Amen. Like, you're not going to do missionary dating. That, you know, I'm, oh, I'll change it. No, you won't. Uh. Believe me. Believe me. You, you will hate the day. That, that, that you actually cross the line and make a covenant with that person. You'd be looking for the, it's like when you buy a lemon. Well, how can I get out of this contract, right? Whoa. So That's good. pay attention to the welfare, the welfare, the condition, the condition, the health, the health of your innermost being. Is your innermost being healthy? Because it's from there flows the wellspring of life. If the fountain is tainted, you can't drink the water. Right. Right. Mm. You, you must have your heart and your mind and your soul healthy by God's standards, not right. by yours or the world. Right. What does God say? I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. Joy and peace. Yes. Amen. Joy and peace. Yes. You put a thermometer in your mouth and take your temperature. <laughs> joy and peace. Find out how much joy and peace is in you. If you're always frustrated, always angry, always irritated, always aggravated, always complaining about what's going on in your life, always chewing on something, so there's no peace inside of you, there's no joy inside of you, or it's poquito, it's super small, and you need to get that healthy, you need to realize something's come in, there must be a wall broken down here, what's coming into my life, or what came in, maybe through a generational curse, you just don't know. So, something came in because it, it was God doesn't bring in tragedy and trauma. Amen. And then Psalm 23, 4, David writes, even when your path, okay, your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me. Amen. For you already have. Yeah. Your authority is my strength yeah. and my peace. Hallelujah. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. Yes. I'll never be lonely for you are near. Oh. Hallelujah. But the key word there is your path. Uh, yeah, right. If the devil lures you uh -uh. into a valley of shadows, uh -uh. Mm -hmm. that's not God's path for you. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. And yet you yeah. say, well, God could protect me in anything. I'll just, I, I can just go wherever I want. No, you can't. No. no. <laughs> Jesus was tempted with that too in the wilderness. Go ahead and turn these stones into bread. No. He says, it's not time for me to do a miracle. Uh -huh. A man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I don't take orders from you, devil. Amen. Right? right. Yeah. You don't take orders from the devil. No. Right. Mm -hmm. The devil can't pump you and get you into a fight. No. The devil shouldn't be able to get you irritated and shooting off and cussing at somebody and speaking over them and speaking bad about them. If the devil can get you to curse somebody... One of your walls is broken down. God says, let me repair that piece of the wall. Let me repair it. And so we'll get the enemy out because things have been bleeding, bleeding, bleeding in. Hallelujah. God loves you. Now, if he leads you through a trial, he's got you. Front, back, top, bottom, left, and right. He's got you. That's why you fear no evil because you know you're in the will of God. Sometimes you're just walking with the Lord and a test comes and you get persecuted or somebody does something against you. You're like, well, what, what is going on? The Lord goes, you're in a test right now. Cling to me really tight. Yes, yes, sir. I'm clinging, I'm clinging to you, Lord. Hallelujah. He says, and once we go through this together, you'll never stop clinging to me. <laughs> right? Praise God. And then God's protection plan. God's protection plan. I'm just basically putting it into three different categories. The Holy Spirit within you. The word of the living God. The Bible. And then angels guarding us. That's God's protection plan. Nice. Amen? Amen. You want to buy a security system for your house. You're going to know where the cameras are. You're going to have to tell them, I want the camera here. I want it pointed in this direction. I, I, know, I want to know when it comes up. Is it going to come up on my phone? Am I going to be alerted? So God's security system, he, he wants to put you in a security, a secured area in the spirit. And he wants you to submit to that secure place. 
because that's where you're protected. So Romans 8, 6 says, Passion Translation, for the sense and reason of the flesh is death. Just try to walk by your own reasoning. Well, logically, I should do this. No, 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 no. <coughs> that's, that's death. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is death. Oh, it looked good, yeah, but it ended up being really bad. But the mindset controlled by the spirit finds what? Life and peace. See, that's what you want on the inside. Then you know the board, the walls are closed and you're safe. You're safe. And the spirit of God is filling you and feeding you. You're not eating tainted food. Amen? And then that, that would be the that would be the Holy Spirit within. Yes. Then the one about the word is Psalm 119, 105. Yes. Truth's shining light. The truth of the word of God guides me in my choices. Yes. Oh, ho, ho. Mm. there you go. That's a border and a boundary right there. Yeah. And that's a portal. That's a portal where God's word comes in and gives you light. Beautiful. And guides me in my choices and my decisions. Yes. The revelation of your word, Jesus makes my pathway clear. Lord, what do I do in this situation? Amen. Amen. He'll be faithful to speak. He's not going to be silent. He's going to speak to you. He says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. So that means he's talking. Jesus didn't create you and then say, oh, hands off, you're on your own. Come on. I'd be like giving a 10-year-old the keys to the car and say, oh, I hope you can make it from here to New York City. You're not going to make it. You're going to crash. God's a good parent. Amen. He's very much with you. He's going to speak to you. But if you're going to make a decision that's out of his will, go to his word. What does the word say about this? The word is very clear in so many areas. Now, maybe it doesn't pinpoint which job you should take. But that's where the Holy Spirit then. You take it to the word. Lord, you said that you would guide my path. So that's what your word says. Now, Holy Spirit, what's the rhema? What's the breathed word? Do I take this job or that job? Mm -hmm. And then he'll speak to you. Amen. You read it on the page. You have it in your heart. You meditate on it. Yeah. And then you ask. And the Holy Spirit, who is hovering over the face of the waters, will do it. Amen. It's the same as in creation. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And then the, the, the angels that guard us. The angels, they are God's military. He's called the commander of the host of heaven. He commands angel armies. Angels are made to protect us, to fight the spirits for us. They are unseen protectors, guardians, messengers. Psalm 91, 11 and 12. I'm not stealing your message. <laughs> He, God, shall give his angels. I'm not talking about don't be calling on demons and, oh, I need to go to this you know, angel psychic. No, no, that's not an angel of God. His angels charge or an assignment over you to keep you in all of your ways. Not in all of your cray-cray ways. <laughs> if you're getting crazy, the angels, they're still going to guard you. But you know what? You might just get run over. You know, you, you go out, you not to put the Lord to the test. Amen. Even Satan tried to use this scripture to Jesus in the wilderness and said, jump off that pinnacle of the temple. The scripture says his angels will keep you in all of your ways. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I don't put the Lord to the test. So when you put the Lord to the test, when you walk outside of the border and go, nah, 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 nah. See, there's no wolf out here. Chomp. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. But he gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways that you walk in his path. In their hands, the angels have hands. They will hold you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. They'll always hold you up. The angels are there. So wherever God sends you, you don't have to be afraid. Amen. You don't have to be afraid. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's good news. Amen. So here's my summary. This is how you're going to have boundaries and borders, portals and protection. Number one, spirit-led boundaries will bring you peace and keep you safe. 
in the realm God has called you to. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Always be led by the Holy Spirit. Father knows best. Number two, God sets protective borders around you to cause you to grow in a safe place where he guards you from danger and harm. He's going to start you off in a greenhouse. He's going to keep you safe from everything that's around. He's going to shelter you and protect you until your roots get strong enough. And his timing is he'll plant you then outside. But you can't make a choice. God, the timing is up to God and not you. The only thing that's up to you and timing is I surrender. Yes, Lord. It's my time to say yes. Yes, Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Yes, Lord. Now my faith is now. My faith is now. I'm always ready. When you say, when you say go, I'm gonna go. I'm right here. I stay at your feet like Mary. I just listen. I just listen. And I'm ready to go. Nothing's holding me back. Number three, only godly heavenly portals should be open in your life. The word, the Holy Spirit, the fivefold ministry, a few close surrendered godly friends. Spiritual portals where you're getting fed spiritually. If you're going from conference to conference, from church to church, from YouTube video to YouTube video to this preacher to that one, you're getting a buffet. What do buffets usually do to your tummy? Indigestion. When Paul raised up Timothy, he raised him up for years, and then he placed him at the church of Ephesus with Apostle John when he left. Timothy didn't say, I wonder what Peter would say about this. I'm going to ask some of the other leaders in the church about this. If you need counsel and you you come to True Grace Church, you should come and talk with myself or Pastor Larry privately. You shouldn't take a vote of other people. Not that the people are bad, but you don't know what they've sown into their heart. You don't know how long they've been here. They could have, they could have been here 10 days or 10 years. And, and, and you don't know what they're, what they're going to regurgitate out to you. And it might sound okay, but it might confuse you too. But don't come and ask for counsel if you're not going to take it. And I don't give counsel to people outside of True Grace Church because that's out of my border. That's out of my border. I'm serious. She said, Pastor Heather, but you've been a believer for 44 years. You've gone to Bible college. You've taught at Bible college. You've led all these other groups. You know a lot of stuff. Don't <laughs> puff me up. <laughs> God says, if you go outside of your boundary or your border and you start trying to tell people out there, counsel, they won't receive it. They'll turn and tear you in pieces. It's true. So that's why, guess what I don't do? I don't go on other people's social media and try to correct them. Hey, by the way, that, you, you, you shouldn't be putting down Apostle Catherine. You, you, you're, you're this and you're that. Well, I don't even touch it. I don't even touch it. I don't even touch it. Absolutely not. Nope. Wisdom is known by her children. And the tree is known by its fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't don't get into conversations that's none of your business. Don't go toe to toe with people. Uh-huh. They're gonna argue with you. That's foolish on your part to get in an argument with somebody about God anyway. Yeah. We're not here to argue about God. We're here to show God's love. Yeah. They're here to demonstrate His kindness. Uh-uh. Amen. 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 So don't please, please don't go off into uncharted waters. That God didn't lead you in. There's sharks out there. Amen. And then the next thing you know, you'll have 50 of their followers bad mouthing you and even Christian cussing. You'll be like, what did I get on this page for? Delete, 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 block. Okay? Yeah, yeah I, I had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Five years ago, I learned the hard way. Both Pastor and I did, huh? So only heavenly portals should be open in your life. And then 
protection. Protection is always found under the safe covering of God's way of living. Amen. God's way of living is a life in the kingdom yeah. where you start as a baby and you grow uh -huh. and you become healthy and you become nourished and you're taking in the right things and you're turning away from things that are not good. You're turning away from things in the world. You're turning away from darkness. You're turning away and you realize, wow, there's such a difference between light and dark right. between God's good and the world's good the truth, the way and the life, he's the real thing yeah. and when you spend that life doing his way, you will never even be tempted to go play in the devil's playground yeah. nothing, nothing I, like the song we sang, I never want to go back to my old life, my old life was Heather doing it her way Stumble, fall, stumble, fall. Now I'm in a pit. Now I'm in a deeper pit. Now I'm in a cavern. Now I'm in a cave. Nobody can hear me. Yeah, but we just went from bad to worse. But living God's way is a life of peace. It's a life of joy. And then as you grow in the kingdom, you have the anointing. From the moment that you're born again, you have the anointing. That's the power of God. But now it's going to increase. It's going to increase in your life as you surrender, as you receive deliverance. As you would surrender to Jesus and acknowledge him as Lord. There's people that just got saved and, and they already are anointed. They can, they can actually pray for people with what they know, with their testimony. But they shouldn't go out of that boundary and now start trying to lead Bible studies. Yeah. Lead, lead you know, home groups and things because the devil will pick them off. Yeah. It's not because they're dumb. It's because they're a child. But then as you grow, you grow in authority and power. That's the that's a combo. When you have the anointing, you receive the authority and the power, but you need to know your sphere and your realm. So you always have authority over your own mind. You always have authority over your own body. You have authority over your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you have authority over your spirit. You have authority, you have choice. And then as you begin to rule over your own spirit and your own soul, you will begin to grow and then be able to be useful in other people's lives because the body is supposed to be very strong and solid and raised on the proper food and nutrition. Yeah. So you want in your life boundaries, you want borders, you want open portals to the Lord and closed doors to the enemy. Yeah. And then you want that protection and stay in God's protection. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That, that is wisdom that you heard tonight. Yeah. Amen. And that, that wisdom will keep you. Yeah. That wisdom was not fluff. That was serious business yeah. right there, right? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't play church. I, I, I just I just want the anointing to flow out of me to you. I want God's power movement in your life. I want you free from everything that harms you and hurts you. I want you free and safe and protected. I want the demonic things that have come into your life generational curses, word curses, things that have come in through your ears, things that have, have been manifested through generations upon you. I want all of that to go. And I want you to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. I want you to reign in life like a king and a queen on this planet with joy and peace in you. Amen. 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 That's what you want. That's what God wants for you. He doesn't want anybody sick. He doesn't want anybody carrying burdens. He doesn't want anybody yoked to old stuff. Yeah. Time to let go. You have a choice to let go or you have a choice to carry it. If you choose to let go, the anointing is here to destroy the yoke. Amen. Everybody want to stand. Hallelujah. This is your opportunity right now.
your opportunity to receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit, who's been hovering over this meeting. He's been hovering over every single one of us here tonight. He's been moving in you. Some of you have been stirred on the inside, and you're like, oh, Pastor Heather, I am sensing the power of God in me. I'm sensing his power. I'm sensing his authority. I'm sensing that I need to get free from some things. I'm sensing that I need healing in my body. Hallelujah. And the Lord says one of the ways that you're going to get delivered, one of the keys is to renounce. The word renounce means I no longer claim that as my own. It's not mine. I'm not claiming that. I'm not claiming those things demonic things in my life anymore. I'm not claiming addictions, bad behaviors, horrible nights of sleep, insomnia, wicked speech, and and, and tormenting thoughts. Even renouncing generational curses where you know you've come from a bloodline where things were done that were evil, were wicked. And and you were at the bottom of the funnel. And, and demonic things were on you even as a little child. Yeah. Little child. Yeah. Where you want to renounce suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Thoughts of death and destruction. Yeah. Some of you have thoughts. The Lord just spoke this to me. Some of you have had thoughts. Where you pictured over and over, not just like one time, but over and over yourself in a coffin at a funeral. That's demonic. The devil wants to see you in a coffin. He wants to see you destroyed. And what you need to remember is that is of the enemy and you have the ability to renounce that thought and never have it again. Because it's not your thought. It's a thought that's been shot into you that the enemy hopes will take root and then you'll begin to speak it. And when you speak words of, I want to die, I wish I would die, the devil says, now I got a legal contract. Because contracts are made with words in the spirit realm. They're not made with writing, so to speak. They're made with words. Yes. It's just the counterfeit of Jesus. When the word goes forth, he's the yes, we're the amen. But when the enemy speaks something and then you, into your mind, shoots a thought, and then you say it and you agree with it, yeah. that's a covenant. That's right. That's a wicked, demonic covenant. Yeah. And if you've ever said that, I want to die. And then those thoughts keep coming back to you about your funeral, yeah. about dying, dying, dying. Maybe you've you've tried even to take your own life. These are all from the enemy. They're from the pit of hell. And you can renounce that. And they'll literally leave you. Not with medication, but seriously, with deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So anybody in here, right? You can come up here, Mario, if you want to just stand on the side over here. Is there anyone in here who's sensing God's power right now? Stirring on the inside of you. And you know that you need deliverance. You know that you need healing. You need. You know that you need to be set free from dark thoughts and from things that have traveled down in your family bloodline to you. Anybody, anybody sensing anything right now moving in you? God speaking to anyone in here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His power is here right now. He's moving. He's moving inside of you. Hallelujah. I am going to speak out and renounce and have you renounce any of these things that have been manifesting in your life. You need to man, you need to renounce, and there will be, even as you renounce, there could be a deliverance at that very moment, even without you coming up, because you're in the place of the anointing. And there's been lots and lots of words of anointing and healing and deliverance released right here. 
right here. So in Jesus' name, I want you to begin where you're at, renouncing anything that's in your life that you don't want there. Just speak out loud. Hallelujah. Anything that's in your life that you want to speak out loud, you renounce it. Let God hear it. Let God hear your words. Hallelujah. You're talking to God now. You're not talking to me. You're talking to the Lord right now, not, not to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I declare in the name of Jesus, every spirit that came in through generational curses must leave you now in Jesus' name. Go. I speak every witchcraft, spirit, or curse that's been put on your life must go now in Jesus' name. Out. I speak over you every word curse that's ever been spoken over you and every spirit that came in through word curses to leave now in Jesus' name. I declare every spirit of mental illness to leave you now in Jesus' name. I declare every spirit of depression to leave you now in Jesus' name and dark thoughts. Dark thoughts thoughts must go now in Jesus name I declare every spirit related to anxiety and worry and stress to go now in Jesus name leave every one of God's people <laughs> I declare every spirit that came in through you visiting a psychic a witch a warlock even online, going to their website, looking at them on TikTok, or witch talk, they call it now. Every spirit that came in through you, putting trust in astrology, new age, crystals having power to heal, oils that you put in your house that change the atmosphere and bring in good energy. Every spirit attached to burning sage in your home, warding off evil, I command to go now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that came in through watching horror movies, murders, rapes, abortion, foul language, cursing. Every spirit that came in through those open doors, through entertainment, through music, I command now to go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Every spirit that came in through abuse, <laughs> violence, I command to go now in Jesus' name, out of God's people. Every spirit that came in through molestation, Every spirit that came in through people that allowed molestation to happen to you and knew about it and didn't stop it. I command to go now in Jesus' name out. Every spirit that came in through incest experimenting sexually demons that came in through that I command to leave now in Jesus name out spirits that came in through you playing with the Ouija board asking demons to answer questions for your life talking to the dead having a seance playing even childhood games of Bloody Mary. I command every one of those spirits to leave you now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that came through someone else doing spells or witchcraft on you, out now in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Lord. Every spirit that came in through Santa Maria, Santa Muerte, somebody rubbing an egg on your body, cracking an egg on your body, inviting demons to come and heal you in any way, shape, or form, giving you false medication. It's not even true medicine. I command to go now in Jesus' name and all the spirits attached to it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Every spirit that came in through open doors of lodges, Masonic Lodge, free masonry, Shriners, I break that demonic spirit off of you and off of your bloodline now in the name of Jesus. Go! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit that came in through religion that told you you had to pray to a saint to get a prayer answered, that told you you had to hold beads and say a certain amount of prayers to get prayers answered, you had to say this prayer this many times or this prayer this many times to get absolved. I command every one of those spirits to leave you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is one mediator between man and God, and it's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Come in every spirit to leave you of condemnation and shame. Yes, Jesus. Due to failures, bad decisions, bad choices, repeated bad choices. In Jesus' name, I command to leave now in Jesus' name out of you. That's not you anymore. That is not you anymore. You will no longer have those thoughts of condemnation and not being good enough and not being righteous and not knowing if you're saved and not knowing if you're loved. I declare every one of those spirits to leave you now in the name of Jesus out. Every lie that the enemy has told you about your righteous place with God must go now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every spirit of performance that causes you to try to work for God's grace, work to be in his favor, do good deeds, fast and pray so God will love you more. So you, can, so you can hear God because you can't hear God unless you're completely fasting or praying long, long religious prayers. I command every one of those spirits to leave you now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's your spirits that tell you you're not good enough and they're lies from the pit of hell. The devil lies all day long. Amen. There's not a demon who tells the truth. That's right. There's not a devil who will ever tell you the truth. That's right. Jesus' name. Every spirit of addiction that has been in your family that's attached itself to you. A young, an older child introduced you to marijuana or alcohol or pills at a young age. Got you to start smoking weed, whatever it was. Addiction spirits in the family. Where you began to, you were exposed to things and then you tried it and you became addicted to chemical substances. Any type of narcotic, any type of alcoholism, I break that power off of you now in the name of Jesus and tell it to go out. You're no longer an addict. You are no longer an addict and you don't have to claim it. You don't have to say it. Once that demon goes, you're free in Jesus' name. You don't have to stay that way. It's not a life sentence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every spirit of addiction to, to food, to sugar, to coffee. Yes. Yes. Anything that causes you to be addicted that you can't stop. It must go now in the name of Jesus out. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I commit every spirit that came in through pornography to leave you now in Jesus' name. 
Every spirit of addiction to pornography. Addiction to masturbation. Addicted to looking at things online. Looking at people the wrong way. Looking at yourself only in a sexual way. I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Out. And I break every soul tie that you've had with anybody yeah. in any sexual relationship outside of marriage now. Yeah. Go in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And be free from the memories. Be free from the memories, people. Be free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, that's not you. That's not you anymore. Hallelujah. 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 Spirits that have come even upon wives and husbands in the bedroom where they have tried to emulate the world and worldly spirits of lust instead of love. I commend every one of those spirits to lead you now in Jesus' name out. Every spirit of fantasy, go now in Jesus' name. Every spirit spouse that comes to you at the night and touches you and wants to have relations with you, I command to leave now in Jesus' name. Out. Go. You shall not return to them again. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you have objects at home that you're ashamed of but you have purchased for self-sexual gratification. And God says it's time to get rid of those. It's time to get rid of those. And you know what? And even instead of just throwing it away in the trash can, put it in a brown paper bag and bring it to church. You don't even have to tell me what's in it. Just say, this is something I use and I no longer want to use it. Nobody's going to put humiliate you in this church. Nobody would do that. You have drug paraphernalia. Put it in a bag and bring it here. If you don't want to say what it is, just say, this is something that I use and I don't want, I detach myself from it in Jesus' name. No questions asked. Hallelujah. If you have pictures, you have things at your house, magazines, books, videotapes, you want to bring them, detach them from you. Tell the devil you don't have a portal into my mind or into my house anymore. Oh, in Jesus' name, bring them here. We don't, we, we don't even have to know what it is. If you want to tell, you can tell. I would let you tell. They burn their magic books in Ephesus. But you know what? Nobody's going to say, well, what is that? What did you do with it? Absolutely not. But God doesn't put people to shame. He removes shame out of people. Come on now. Come on now. We were all sinners. But saved by God's grace. None of us had anything to brag about before Jesus. Right? Hallelujah. This is real right now. They don't talk about this in church. This is not polite talk in a religious church. How dare you talk about that in church? Because how dare I not let people get free? How dare I not let people get free? Bring it. Bring it. It is an offering to God. Say, I don't want this in my life anymore. I'm done with the devil's lies. I'm done with trying to be something the devil told me I had to be. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to speak over your bodies right now. Anybody who's got any kind of an ailment, any kind of a disease, any kind of an ache or a pain, I don't care if it's a hangnail or if they just diagnose you with something you think is severe and they're scared for you. No matter if it's been there a long time or it just came, in Jesus' name, I just release God's healing over you now. I commend every spirit of infirmity to leave your body. <laughs> Every spirit that has brought infirmity to you to go now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that came through generational curses, I detach you from now in Jesus' name and I command it to go. Every autoimmune spirit, go. Every diabetic spirit, go. Every kidney disease spirit, go. Every gallstone spirit, go. Every breast tumor spirit, go. Every cervical cancer spirit and, 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 and any kind of female cancer spirits, go. Yes. Prostate cancer, go. Yes, it stops. It will not come to you in Jesus' yes, name. Any type of growth, malignant or benign in your body that doesn't need to be there, I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
spirits that cause tooth decay in your mouth, causing your teeth to have problems and have you, you have cavities and gingivitis and you have constant bad breath and, and you have problems with your teeth rotting or even discoloring. In Jesus' name, I command it to go now. In the name of Jesus, it's detached from you. Poor eyesight, vision problems, farsighted, nearsighted, glaucoma, stigmatism. In Jesus' name, degeneration, I command it all to leave you now. In the name of Jesus, and I speak healing over your eyes. Be restored as new as they ought to be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hearing loss, hearing problems, hearing going down, blockage in the ears, and even things that were not didn't even grow right. Maybe you've been you've been deaf all your life. In Jesus' name, I speak healing over your ears right now and everything that's not working to begin working as it ought to. Repair eardrums right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Fix bones. Give them the ability to move where they were being hardened by autoimmune or any kind of a disease in Jesus' name. Open. Ears be open now in Jesus' name. I speak to every spirit of muteness. Every spirit of muteness that's not allowing you to speak, I command it to go now in Jesus' name. And every spirit that causes you to stutter and to not be able to get your words out, I command to leave now in the name of Jesus. No more stuttering in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every, every spirit that's caused you to even have speech impediments, lisps, Words, not being able to pronounce words correctly. I command to leave now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I speak over everybody's sinuses right now in Jesus' name. I command every spirit of infection in your sinuses, in your nasal passages, above, above your eyebrows, all the way down into your bronchial tubes now, and your eustachian tubes, every single spirit causing sinus, Ear, nose, and throat problems go now in Jesus' name. No more will you have chronic sinus infections in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are able to breathe freely now. Freely now. I speak healing over your heart. I speak healing over every part of your body. You will not have an aneurysm. You will not have myo. Carditis, you will not have heart problems. You. And you will not die. Amen. You will not die, but you will live. Yes. You've had testimony you. of the glory of God that He purged those things out of you. <coughs> In Jesus' name, I command every spirit of autism to leave every child. If you're a parent or a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle. And anybody in your family has been diagnosed with autism, you stand in the gap for them right now in Jesus' name, and you renounce it. You renounce it over that child. <clears throat> Even if you're not the parent, you renounce it if you're related in Jesus' name. And I commend every spirit of autism, mental retardation, to go now in the name of Jesus. Out of every child. That anyone on this live or in this room is standing for. And I speak healing over their mental abilities. I speak healing over their social abilities. I speak healing over their emotions. I speak healing over their speech, their hearing, their interaction. Their behavior. In Jesus' name and their peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is moving so mightily, even here right now, even though nobody particularly came up. There are people manifesting here. There are people getting free here tonight. There are people getting healed here tonight. There's people online getting free right now. And it's not about one-on-one -on -one prayer. Because the anointing goes out in the sphere of influence yes. within the borders of the authority that God has allowed me to minister in. If he's had me online and you're watching, you're under that anointing. You're yes. under that authority. You're under that covering. And it goes to you. If you're in this building, you're under that anointing. You're under the covering. You're under that authority where demons know they have to leave. Where sickness knows it can't stay anymore. Where fevers are rebuked and they go. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. This is the power of God manifest on the earth. And he wants it to go around the whole earth so everybody knows, oh, those Christians have authority. Those Christians have power. Those Christians are anointed, not just by fold ministers, but those who carry the kingdom of God within them and recognize their borders, their boundaries, the open portals from heaven, their authority, their assignment, and then they grow to begin to release it outward. Releasing it outward. You are a carrier of God's anointing. Yes, and as you release it, you change the atmosphere wherever you go. Yes. Literally. Yes. Literally. The air is changed when you walk into a place. Yes. The anointing goes with you. You carry the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. You're a vessel, sanctuary that carries God. Only let his words come out. Only let that love come out of you. Only let that grace come out of you. Only let God's peace come out of you. You smell like him as you've been in his presence, and his presence is in you. You don't even have to put perfume on because his presence is your perfume. You walk down an aisle in a grocery store and people will feel the glory of God. And if the Lord has you stop, you go ahead and stop. And if he has you speak, you go ahead and speak. You release God's love wherever you go. Everything you touch, you can bless if it's God put it in your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the next service that we're going to have here. We have a women's gathering on Friday night called Warring Women at 6.30. You can bring your items that you want to bring and we will throw them away and you can be detached from them. Amen. Some of you need to bring some old pictures you've been holding on to of soul ties, people that you don't need to have in your life anymore. It may be even their old pictures of you and you thought, you know, well, I'm just going to hold on to this, but you know it wasn't taken at the right time, at the right place, you may, weren't maybe even in your right mind when you took it. I had to get rid of a few of those too, right? And so, uh, but we have church on, we have gathering service on Sunday morning at nine o'clock, and that's for men and women, obviously, and children. You bring those items, bring things. You can bring pills you wanna get rid of. I, I don't care if it's a, if it's an illegal drug, we can get rid of it here. If it's a prescription drug and the Lord says, get rid of it. I watched a lady bring almost a hundred bottles to Apostle Catherine of prescription medicine and said, I used to take all of this and now I'm free from it. It was the, it looked like a big old sewing box or a fishing box. It was filled with all these prescriptions. I'm thinking, who would have prescribed all this for one person? But somebody did. You can bring those things. You can bring any witchcraft items, bring them, and, and we're going to get rid of them. We're going to detach them from you because things in your life, in your home, can be an open portal to darkness. One of the very first people I ever ministered to was on the phone, and her dad called me at 1130 at night. Her dad was, was a friend of ours. And he said, there's there's a manifestation of my daughter right now and she can't sleep in her bedroom. Could, could you pray for her? And I began to pray for her. I didn't know her, I'd never met her. And the Lord gave me a vision. And I said, you have a, a, a pentagram on your bed net nightstand right next to your bed. How did you know that? He said, the Lord showed it to me. He said, you're, you're operating in witchcraft? Well, kind of. I gave my boyfriend a bracelet and it burnt his, his wrist. And it wasn't heated. It burnt his wrist. I said, did you dedicate it? She says, well, yeah, I, de I dedicated it. She didn't tell me to who, but to a demon. So he would be in love with her. It was like a charm. It was like a love spell. That, that's real. Demons really do that. Yeah. And it literally burnt his wrist. There was burns all around his wrist. And she says, I have seven mirrors in my room and I turn them over every single night because I can't look in the mirror because I see a demon face. I said, do you know Jesus? Are you born again? No. I said, well, you need to give your life to Jesus right now. This was even before I was casting out any demons, but I knew this. I knew this was open doors. She had all kinds of jewelry and, and books and spell books and all kinds of things. Come to find out down the hall, grandma's full-blown witch. Like practicing witchcraft in a room and 
spells and seances and all kinds of things. And this is, and the man was in the room. He says, I, can you pray for her? I says, yes, but she needs to get delivered. This was actually before I went down to Apostle Catherine's because I, I, I need to know how to cast demons out. As soon as that impartation came to me, she didn't want to come to church. So, But she did get sleep that night. She threw away some things, and she actually got to sleep. But those were some things the Lord showed me that were actually in her room on some other items of jewelry as well. So I want you to, to understand you can come on Sunday and bring those items, anything. I don't care. I don't care what it is. Sometimes it's a family heirloom. You're like, but I can't get rid of that, huh? I know a lady who wore a family heirloom, went down and, on missionary trips to Mexico and taught worship dance, dancing worship, and she loved Jesus. She was in her 20s. But she said, I, I need to bring this necklace. She says, every time I wear it, um, it's, it burns me. And it was like a red ruby. Well, where did you get it? Well, my mom said it came from grandma, and grandma was a witch. Yeah. Witches dedicate jewelry. You're like, well, could you just take the spell off? Well, I don't know. But if you want to get rid of it, get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? If it's been dedicated to the devil, why would you want to keep it? Let God give you one that's dedicated to him. So I just release this anointing over everyone here tonight. I release the anointing of joy and peace. I release soundness of mind and wholeness in your thoughts. I release God's abundant life to you, the real life. I release God's protection and wisdom to you, the anointing that will cause you to put up healthy boundaries, spiritual borders. Only have portals open to God as you are a vessel that carries the spirit of the living God. And I declare God's protection over you, coming and going in Jesus' name. As you go in the paths that God leads you in, I declare no evil shall befall you and no plague, pestilence, pandemic, sickness will come near you or your family in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I declare your eyes to be open to see in the spirit the angels yes. that God has sent to protect you yes. and minister to you over your home, over your car, over your physical body. Thank you, Lord. And I release to you now this revival anointing yes. that you declare over yourself. I carry the revival in me. I carry the revival in me. I carry this new wine. I carry this anointing. And I am a dispenser, a vessel, a container, and a dispenser of the anointing of God wherever I go, whenever I pray, in my house, out in the store, at church, at school. I carry, at work, I carry this anointing. And I release it wherever I go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. You are called for such a time as this. Such a time as this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody, let's just stand and praise God. Just as we say goodnight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Also, I want to give you an opportunity if you want to sow into the work of the ministry here. We have envelopes up here in this basket where you can put your offering in or your tithe. If you're going to sow online, go to truegracechurch.com and you can give through our website. You can mail a check to us and our address is on our website. But I declare over all of your seed right now in Jesus' name that you are abundantly supplied for every good work according to the law, the spiritual law of sowing and reaping, the law of, of giving with a generous heart, giving what is in your heart to give, and that you have a multiplied return and harvest come back to you in abundance for every good work in Christ. And I declare that your needs are met and beyond, and that you have more than enough to be generous 
to be generous to the poor, to be generous to the widows, yes. to be generous to the yes. orphans, yes. to be generous to people Jesus. in need. For the Lord says, give and it shall be given into you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, yes. shall men pour into your bosom. Because the Lord is unwilling to abandon or do without a yes. cheerful, hilarious giver whose That's heart right is in their giving. In yes. Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. Your seed and your harvest is multiplied now. Amen. All of you, have a beautiful, blessed night. May you just meditate on the goodness of God amen. and what you heard here tonight. Yes. And the anointing and the angels, the Holy Spirit goes with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night, everybody. Amen.